Well, you know, uh, the Lord put this on my heart a while back, and as I go through my message, you'll, it'll kind of pop out exactly when he did about birthing the promises. Um, you know, um, yesterday or day before, one of the daily messages that I sent out to the women uh, from Jesus Calling was birthing the prom- was about birthing promises. It was after I had sp- I'd spoken this message uh, at the uh, luncheon. And, you know, it just reminded me that, you know, God, God is reminding us that the pro- not to give up, not to give up, because the promises is, are being birthed. And I thought, you know, even though he spoke this to me, even though we, we talked about it, and when it popped up on the daily devotion, I thought that's just another reminder. You know, he means business. God, God is about his business. Um, you know, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of promises in the Bible to, for believers. And here's just a few. God said, I will not leave you or forsake you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. The promises go on and on and on. In 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen. For To the glory of God through us. So there's a lot of promises. I have a whole list of them here, but, but you all here are mature Christians, and you know there's a lot of promises in the Bible. And, you know, have you ever wondered why your life maybe doesn't always reflect the promises? Sometimes they don't. Sometimes our promises, we wonder where they're at, don't we? So how do believers activate God's promises in their lives? Is there some secret or formula involved? Well, there kind of is. There kind of is a formula. I want to give you a, a couple of things to think about. Number one, maintain a soft heart. In Hebrews chapter 3, the writer reminds us about the children of Israel after he brought them out of Egypt. He explains how their hearts were hard and rebellious, and they, they, they tested God. Their, their hearts always wandered from him, and they didn't know his ways. They were supposed to be the people of God. We're supposed to be the people of God, aren't we? But because of their choices and their hearts, God said, they shall not enter my rest. This meant that they would never enter that promised land. But they had a promise. But they didn't enter it. So we need to look at why. You know, this is what the Bible's for, isn't it? To give us an example of what to do and what not to do. The promised land was a huge promise that God gave the Israelites. A land of their own, their inheritance, because they were God's special chosen people. But they forfeited that promise of God because of their hardened hearts. When we have hard hearts, we can't understand God's ways. It blinds us to what God is doing and saying. So, you know, when our hearts are hard, and believe me, I'm sure all of our hearts have been hard at some time or another, depending on what we're walking through, haven't they? I mean, you know, that, that's just the nature of the flesh. Um, so when our hearts are hard, sometimes it's hard to hear the voice of God. So today, if you'll hear his voice and not harden your hearts, as in rebellion, then we must keep a soft heart that's willing and open to hearing God's voice if we want to inherit those promises. So our attitude... Some people have an attitude, you can't tell me anything, so they really don't listen for the voice of God, do they? They listen to their voice and what they want and and what their plans are. But if we want the promises of God to manifest in our lives, we must guard ourselves from rebellious attitudes and be sure to maintain a submissive heart toward God. And the second is to reject unbelief. Hebrews 3, 12 through 13 says, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, and departing from the living God, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin deceives us so that truth seems like a lie and lie seems like the truth. There's a lot of that right now in our world. There's a lot of that. Unbelief and doubt lead to hardness of heart. That's what happened to the Israelites. Even though they saw God's mighty works and wonders, they still allowed their hearts to doubt God and to grow callous toward him and his ways. So if we're living in unbelief, we can't expect to see the promises of God. So, you know, doubt is unbelief. So if you pray and ask for something, it's not happening. We tend to think, where's God? I'm not sure he's going to show up. Well, that first time that you say, I'm not sure he's going to show up, or I'm not sure he's going to come through, you're opening the door for that unbelief because that's what doubt is. I'm not sure he can do this. Maybe he can, but he may not do it for me. He seems to do it for everybody else. Do you ever feel that way? You know, they got their miracle, their promise was answered, but mine wasn't, or I'm not sure that's for me. So that's, that's where we open the door. And, you know, God's promises are available to believers. They are. But they're not available to doubters. They're not available to doubters. 
So Hebrews 3, 18 through 19 says, And to, to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Believing and obeying God are keys to unlocking his promises. Remember, God rewards faith. He doesn't reward unbelief. Right. Hebrews 11 and 6 states, But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, I'm just kind of fixing to get to the real message, okay? This is kind of opening. Um, number three, combine the word, the promises of God, with faith. There's three things there that we need to do. Hebrews 4.2 explains about the people of Israel. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them. You know why? It wasn't mixed with faith. And those that heard it. If you have two people there that receive the same promise, and one receives a promise and one doesn't, you need to kind of, kind of, they were probably doubting. You know, doubting. I, I don't think God's going to come through for me. You know, we're to come to God as a little children. And you tell little children something, they, mama said that, daddy said that. We need to come to God like that. If it's in the word, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It, whether you believe it or not, <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. The children of God heard his word and promises, but they didn't receive anything from God because they didn't combine what they heard with faith. They never obtained what God promised them because they walked in unbelief instead of faith. And, you know, he's no respecter of persons. He's not. But the believer receives and the doubter does not. So there, there is a formula to receive your promises. We don't just sit back and, well, God promised that it's going to happen. Well, it's not going to happen for the unbeliever. Faith is believing that you already have what you're hoping for. It's pulling God's promises from the spirit realm into the physical realm. So if God said a, has a promise up there, you know, I'm like, wow, I mean, that promise is for me. And I'm not going to doubt it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Because, you know, those of you that know me know I have that attitude. It's like just enough stubbornness in me that if God said it, it's going to happen. It's just black or white. That's just the way that I believe. So those who believe in faith that God is who he says he is and that he'll do what he says he'll do, no matter what the circumstances around them look like, they believe and obey anyway. Anyway. And the answers may not come like you expect because, you know, God has different ways. He has different ways. Um, there are requirements to receiving the promises as we just went through and beginning the journey to receive these promises requires faith. So we really need to look at ourselves, you know, as where our faith level is. And we need to be constantly building our faith, constantly, because sometimes life happens and our faith kind of, oh, I don't know. So we need to constantly work on building our faith and increasing our faith. I always like to compare the natural with the spiritual because that's how I learned. You know, I'm a show and tell kind of girl. God just kind of draws me a picture, and all of you know that, that when I tell something, it's like God has to draw me a picture. Um, but in the natural, so suppose you're in the natural, what did you hear? What, what promise did you hear? Did you hear you're pregnant? You have a promise, don't you? Somebody said you're pregnant, but you don't see the evidence yet, do you? But you will. But there are requirements. There's requirements for you to see the evidence of that pregnancy. You have to take care of yourself. You have to take those prenatal vitamins. You have to prop up your feet when they swell. You have to see your doctor once a month. You've got to take care of that promise of that baby. You don't lift anything too heavy. You're in the process of birthing a promise. So in the spiritual, we're going to switch that. We have many promises in the word, but by faith we receive those promises how big is your faith? What are the requirements to increase our faith? We need great faith. We do need great faith if we want to see promises of God. We must spend time reading and meditating on the word along with hearing the word preached and taught by spirit-filled, anointed men and women of God. And as our faith grows, the promises be, will be birthed. Just as our tummy would grow with the natural promise of a baby. You're going you're, you're to see it grow. In New King James Version 2, version, oh, verse 2, 1 Peter 2, 1 and 4, 
Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And we don't need to just skip over that verse real, really quick. All malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, evil speaking. There are some things that get in our way of us receiving our promises. And, and that's a struggle sometimes, you know, because we all deal with people. We deal with family. We deal with jobs. We deal with different things that's happening. And we have to be careful and watch that we don't, don't fall into evil speaking and deceit and envy. We must learn about his love. His justice, his mercy, and his plan. We must form a relationship with him personally through his son, Jesus Christ. But we start with baby steps. And I know most of us are out of the baby step phase, but this will, I'm going to walk you through it. We start with baby steps, the pure milk of the word, salvation, grace, mercy, and then on to develop the fruits of the Spirit. Well, what are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You got them all down? Well, patience is kind of hard for all of us sometimes, isn't it? So we work on that. We work on that. Self-control, well, most of the time. But there are times it's like, oh, my goodness. But we have to work on that. But those who are in Christ are distinguished from unbelievers in that they have been gifted with the Holy Spirit that enables them to bear fruit. Without the Holy Spirit... it you wouldn't know if you were failing in some of these. For to give you a little nudge, uh, you need some self-control there, you know. So, um, so the Holy Spirit enables us to bear fruit. And this is eternal life in John 17, 3, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. We should ask him to reveal himself to us and change us because pregnancy changes us, doesn't it? So just as becoming pregnant with the word and the spirit changes us, just as Mary was pregnant by the spirit of God with his son in the natural, it changed her. And she gave birth to the promise of God. But pregnancy makes us uncomfortable, doesn't it? And I'm talking about in the natural, but also in the spiritual. But right now we're with the, right now we're in the natural. It makes us uncomfortable. It gives us stretch marks, heartburn, morning sickness for some women. But pregnant with a promise requires growing our faith and coming to know the Lord because it's by our faith that we receive the promises of God. Yes, stretch marks. I don't think I can see this promise happening, Lord. There's no way. You have to stretch your faith sometimes to see some of the promises, don't you? You have to really stretch your faith. It's like, oh, I'm not sure about that. We, sometimes we have to be stretched to believe when we can't see. We can't see anything happening. Morning sickness, Lord, I get sick just thinking about this. When something comes up, I am anxious, not knowing how this is going to work out. I'm nauseous. Do you ever get sick about some things that you're going through? You really get morning sickness over some things? Well, you know, when you're pregnant, you get morning sickness because you're, you're birthing that baby. Well, in the, in the spirit, when something happens, do you, do you, not, you wonder how is this going to happen? You see this promise you've been given? And it can kind of make you sick. Lord, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to happen. Heartburn? Oh, my goodness. Heartburn? Yes. This changes us. Promises change us as we start walking through and to birth the promise. We have this promise, and then, okay, just like the promise of the new church. Aren't we excited? Well, we have one cameraman, don't we? Well, we may have two cameras out there. We have a soundboard. Uh, we have one person that can work the sound, and that's Josh, and you know, and then Pastor when he's out up here preaching. What are we gonna do? Heartburn? Eighteen hundred square feet I clean on Monday morning. Eight thousand square feet. Who's gonna help clean? Is somebody gonna help me clean? Is somebody gonna help me do the PowerPoint when I really don't know what I'm doing other than just hitting an arrow? If it messes up, I don't know what to do from there. Heartburn. Yes, we're birthing this promise, but there's things to think about. There's heartburn. So, you know, as we walk in the Spirit and allow Him to control our lives, we'll begin to trust Him more and more. I trust Him that it's going to be all worked out. But still, there's that little queasiness like, ah, uh, 
You know, we need, we need some people there to watch over the kids. What, what if we have 100 people come on the first day and they've got a lot of little kids running around and we don't have a place for them? Will they come back? These are heartburn, morning sickness, things to think about. We're birthing a promise. Hebrews 6, 12 through 14, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Faith and patience. Faith and patience. Faith, I know the Lord spoke it. I know it's going to happen. Patience. Patience, I'm sending you the people. I'm sending you the workers. That's the hardest one. But just as we have patience with our babies, we must develop patience with ourselves. And sometimes that's the hardest thing to do is to give ourselves patience in what we're doing and what we're believing for. We must be patient in the waiting for the birth is coming. We know we have a promise. Abraham and Sarah waited 25 years for the fulfillment of God's promise with a baby. Did anybody wait a long time or pray about having a baby and it didn't happen for a long, long time? I asked Loretta at the luncheon, I said, how long did you pray for a baby? Well, she was 42 when, she, when, they, when they got that baby. And how, how did they get it? It wasn't the natural way that you would think that the baby was going to come. It came a different way. It's no different than the promises of God. You may be looking for the promise over here, and really it's coming down this road, and you don't know that. And you think God's forgotten you because you don't turn around and see that the promise is over here instead of here. God answers your prayers. God, God, God honors his word. And when you get a promise, it's going to happen, but it may not come the way you think it's going to. Noah had a promise of rain. He had never seen rain before or built an ark. But he got busy building it because he knew the promise was coming. He believed what God said. He just simply believed what God said. So how many, how, how many of you have children in here? Everybody, probably. How many have more than one child? Okay. All births are different, aren't they? When you birth a baby, they're all different. Have you ever experienced a suddenly? Have you ever experienced a suddenly in a, in a blessing from God or a promise that just happened suddenly? Well, in the natural, I had a suddenly when I had my first baby. I carried him for nine months, but he was born in 45 minutes. Barely had time to get to the hospital. And I'm just like, all I had was a backache. My mom had just got there that day, and... I was way out in Florida, and she just got there that day to help me because this was due date. And I'm just like, I don't know what all the terminology is for, you know, well, here you're at this and you're at that. And I went to the doctor. I didn't know what it meant. So I had a backache. My mom said, well, I, I had back labor when I had you. And I'm like, well, what's that? I haven't read about that. And so she said, you might want to call your doctor. So I called my doctor, and he said, you need to come to the hospital. I mentioned blah, 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 blah. When she said, the doctor this morning, well, I didn't know what that meant. I was 17. And, I, and still, it was my first baby. I hadn't read up on all these things. I, so I, I get there, nine months to the day, and the birth was a suddenly. There were no five-minute correct co contractions. There was no deep breathing. There was nothing that the little book tells you. A fast ride to the hospital. I'm 17. I don't know what's going on. They give me a shot. They knock me out, and I wake up, and I have a son. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> And I'm like, my suitcase, was, my suitcase was packed. It was at home and had all the cute little things in it. And I didn't even get to take it. And I'm just like, Lord. But sometimes our promises, they just don't happen the way the book says they do. They all are different. You know, Peter was kept in prison. But earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood by him. Suddenly. And a light shone in the cell, and striking Peter on the side, he woke him and said, Rise quickly. Instantly, the chains dropped off his wrist. Instantly. His deliverance happened suddenly. Yes. Suddenly. Now, I know all about birthing babies at this point, right? I'd had one child. So almost three years later, here comes a second one. Well, I think I've got this down, okay? I've got it all down. I think I know how this happens. Well, my second child wasn't a suddenly. And I thought something was wrong. Her due date was the end of December. No suddenlies, no baby. I'm like, okay. And, of course, I was going to the doctor once a week during the last month, like we're supposed to. But no changes all through January. 
doctor visits every week. And he was the one that saw me from day one. And so, you know, there, so, okay, let me go back. So I'm miserable. I can't sleep. I can't breathe. I can't tie my own shoes. I can't roll over. I can't sleep on my tummy. Have you ever had a promise when you felt like God just forgot you? And there you are. It's like, I know there's a baby in there. You know, where are you, Lord? Well, the timing just seemed to be off for some reason. I don't know what. But she came February the 9th. February the 9th. I went to the doctor for like two and a half months every week. But we have scriptures that we're standing on when a promise has been spoken to you. You don't want to give up. You don't want to give up. You want to hang on. You want to know that you know that you know that your God is not going to let you down. And that it may not come the way that, that you think it's going to. So when she was born, she had chubby cheeks, fat little wrist, a bit overdue, but she was still there, just, God, just as God had promised. His timing, not mine. And then I had two more. And they were, they were surprise blessings, both of them. It's like, okay, Lord, whatever. Whenever he, get, he gets here, that's just fine by me. However... Because I done learned by then that there, you know, there isn't a book to tell you everything. Um, but you know what, what, what blessings, what promises that God has for us, and we just have to trust Him. God's promises, like the birth of children, require a gestation period, an agonizing season of waiting and waiting and waiting. Sometimes, most people in the Bible who claim big promises didn't get instant microwave answers. Like the child is Hannah, the airless Abraham, or the imprisoned apostle Paul. They travailed and waited. Travailed and waited some more. Have you ever travailed over something? I've travailed a lot on different things. But God didn't let me down. Some things came suddenly. Some things came years later. But God never, never let me down. Never let me down. In the animal kingdom, big creatures often had the longest gestation periods. A baby whale grows in his mother's womb for 18 months, and a baby giraffe waits 15 months. Some species of elephants are pregnant for two years. I'm so glad I'm not an elephant, aren't you? <laughs> so that tells me if I'm carrying a big promise, I should be prepared to wait. Wait. It's a big promise. I carried a written prophecy around with me the last four years, and I know that most of you here have heard it, but he's recording this, so I want to make sure we don't leave some of it out. Um, so I was watching for this, this to happen because I knew it was from the Lord. I knew that I knew that I knew it was from the Lord. And I, and I was watching for it, knowing with great faith that it was going to come to pass someday. I don't have a doubt. I knew it was going to come to pass. Every time that we would do something different or I would do something different in my life, I would, I would get that, that wit, written prophecy out and look at it to see if it lined up with what I was walking through. And, and not, nothing. And I'd say, okay, not time. I stick it back on my Bible. Well, whenever um, Pastor Chris spoke on the gates around Jerusalem and the towers and the walls and the, and the map that was set out and everything, uh, when we found the new church building, um, that we're moving into, I just got my promise out, my, 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 my prophecy, and I compared it to the map of Jerusalem that he had preached from. And I found after studying the map and a map of Branson West that the new church sat at the location of the gate of the governor on that map because I put them both together like this. And when I took them up and showed them to Pastor Chris, he held it up to the light, and it's just like, oh, my goodness, this is almost exact replica of that map. And the maps were just almost exact mirrors of each other. And the prophecy coincides with, you know, things in his life. This, this, this was a prophecy that was spoken way before we even knew each other. Way, it was spoken in early 2017. Um, and so we signed the lease on that building out there <clears throat> November the 2nd. And so when we signed it and we got back to the house... It was like God reminded me that it takes nine months to birth a baby. And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I need to look at the other lease on this building. And I asked Pastor Chris to go pull it out, and he, he, he went down and got, got the lease, or he was prompted to get the, 
to, to get the contract and bring it back up. We signed the lease on this building on February the 2nd of 2021. We signed the lease on the new building on November the 2nd, 2021. That's exactly nine months. Exactly nine months from signing the lease. That promise was given in early 2017. I've been studying that prophecy, praying for understanding, waiting, watching, and believing. And you know what? I didn't know we, we became pregnant on February the 2nd. But it's February 2nd, 2021. We did. We weren't showing. We weren't showing. We didn't know we were pregnant. But as God started sending people in, it was like we, we started having conversations about three months into it or four months into this church that most of the people coming in here are grounded in the word. They are either missionaries or retired pastors or, you know, or have ministries, you know, of their own that are coming in. And, and what God showed us that is that he was building a strong foundation. And so, you know, it's just like when that baby is in the mother's womb and it's not going to be born until it's got his little lungs all ready to breathe and his little eyes and his fingers and his toes. It's the same thing in the spirit that God was building a foundation for this church to be birthed. So, um, yes, we were at that point when we started noticing that it's like, okay, we're showing and we're growing then when I reviewed the, and, and re reviewed the lease day, so the nine months difference in signing, I knew we had birthed a new church, one that lined up with the four-year-old prophecy. And that is God. And I have no doubt. I have no doubt. I have great faith that God is going to honor his word, and whatever that he wants there is going to happen there. And I believe because it's at the gate of the governor where, where Nehemiah was one of the ones that was responsible for bringing the revival into Jerusalem that this is what's going to happen through this church because that's very significant at that location. Well, how quickly we forget that prayer is often compared with childbirth in the Bible. We forget that sometimes. But in the process, we must press through the darkness of doubt and lay hold of God's sure promise especially when we feel like giving up. Many of us right now are at the most intense stage of the birth process. And that's the transition phase. Oh, Lord, help us. When a pregnant woman feels confused, irritable, and restless, and in pain, I can't do this, I can't do this. Oh, yes, you can do this. And at this time is when we begin to wonder if it's worth all the pain, and the restless nights, et cetera, et cetera. But here it is. We endure very similar feelings of desperation in our walk of faith. We ask ourselves, did God really promise me that? Everything inside of us wants to quit believing. But we must not let the flame of prayer go out. We must persevere. We must continue to increase our faith. And finally, our groaning and stretching will pay off. And yes, we will have something to shout about. Because we will see that only God could do this. All of his promises are yes and amen. If the promise came from him, and, you, and we have to know the promise came from him, then he is working quietly behind the scenes. Because, you know, if he could show us everything now, it, it, would, it would be a scary thing. Like, oh, we can't do that. We can, how are we going to do this? How are we going to run two cameras? How are we going to run the sound? How are we going to, how are we going to vacuum 8,000 square feet with this one little vacuum cleaner? Okay, so, but that's a promise. So God's going to provide. You can birth the promises, just grow your faith and trust God. He will do what he says he will do in his timing. And looking back, you can always look back and see God's hand in everything in your life. We can't see it sometimes when we're walking through it. When we're walking through it, we think, where are you, God? But if we could just remember of all the times that we've looked back and saw his hand in everything in our life, that we can, we can trust him and just walk forward. Because God, he is a good God. It's always in his timing, and his timing is always the best time for your promise to be birthed. Because I can tell you, there's many things in my life that were birthed, that if they had happened when I wanted them to happen, I wouldn't be here today. 
I'd be somewhere else. I wouldn't be in God's will, you know. I mean, I still love God, but if you want to stay in God's will, you need to trust God, trust his timing, increase your faith, work on that great faith, spend your time in your word, spend your time in prayer, get to know him personally, and don't become a doubter. Yeah. And that, that is my word. If anybody here has a promise that they're waiting on, and that they feel like they need to increase their faith. You know, we can pray with you, but I can tell you it's your actions that's going to that's gonna increase your faith. I can't pray for your faith to be increased, and then you never pick up your word. I can't pay, pray for you to believe, and then you walk out of here and say, I can't see that happening. This is something that you have to choose to believe. It's a choice. But we can pray for God to... Uh, encourage you we can pray for that word to jump off that page and get down in your heart and stay there but it's going to take you meditating on it and you praying and you coming to know Jesus personally I, I praise God for everything that he's ever done in my life looking back looking back he never left me he never left me and he'll never leave you